Hi, this is Brian from the Underwater Photography Guide. In this video, I go over how to quickly and easily remove backscatter from your photos using Photoshop. Starting off here, I've got a photo of a turtle with a sunburst. You can see it's pretty messy with backscatter. Um, this would take a really long time using Lightroom to fix. Um, you know, we're talking it might be an hour or longer. Uh, but I can do this in Photoshop in uh, five minutes, plus or minus. So, uh, the first thing is, I've got my photo in Lightroom, and I right-click on it and put Edit in Photoshop. I do this so that the edited photo in Photoshop links up with my non-edited photo in Lightroom, and it automatically gets added to my catalog. So, you have two options here. You can either um, send the photo right to Photoshop before you do any editing in Lightroom, or you can do all your edits in Lightroom first, and then use Photoshop. I tend to uh, edit in Lightroom and then use Photoshop because I'm pretty confident in my edits. The problem with this method is um, if I go and edit the photo in Photoshop after doing all my edits in Lightroom, then I can't go back and change those edits. Whereas if I first use Photoshop and then do all my edits in Lightroom, then I can uh, go back and change my Lightroom edits later if I want to do something differently. So you pick which way works best for you. Uh, either way, you end up, uh, you go edit in Photoshop. So now it will uh, open the image up in Photoshop. And what we want to do with this image is uh, duplicate the layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a second layer that is a duplicate of this, this background layer. So I right click on the layer here in the bottom right corner. Duplicate layer, I like to call this the DNS filter for dust and scratches filter. Okay, so now we've duplicated the layer and now I'm going to apply the dust and scratches filter to this duplicated layer. So I go filter, noise, dust and scratches. I leave the threshold at zero and I set a radius so that um, you can see uh, on the image so that it removes all the backscatter. So usually 15 is a pretty good amount. And you can see it makes the rest of the image blurry, but it does get rid of all the backscatter. That's OK. OK, so we put OK, and now the filter is applied. The next step is we need to add a, uh, we need to hide this layer. And so what we do is while the DNS filter layer is selected, we go Layer, Layer Mask, Hide All. So this hides the dust and scratches layer behind the base image. Now, all we have to do is select the Paintbrush tool make sure that the color white is selected and, and you can see here that Photoshop has created this black mask layer um, and, and this this mask shows that it's hiding the dust and scratches layer but anywhere that we paint white on this black mask it'll bring through the dust and scratches layer so we can start with clear water and as I paint white in here I want to make sure the opacity is 100% Flows 100, smoothing 0. As I paint white on this mask, it brings through the dust and scratches filter over top of the, uh, the original image. And so this is, it's, it, it basically is just painting away the backscatter. Okay, so any area that's clear like that, I can just use uh, a large brush and paint. One trick I find useful is if I paint over something that I don't want to by mistake. Um, you can see here I smudge out the turtle's face. Um, instead of having to undo and go back to find which step I uh, mis made a mistake on, I can instead just turn the paintbrush black and paint back over the area that I want to restore to the original background layer. Of course, I don't want to lose all the details in the foreground on the turtle, but I still have a few bits I want to get rid of. So in this case, I shrink the paintbrush down to the size of the particles, and I click on them. By the way, this is much quicker if you have a mouse uh, rather than using a trackpad. So I go through this area, I click the different little bits and pieces, and this allows me to maintain the details of the foreground while making it still look a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now we have this, this kind of mid-ground, background range, where there are some details and we don't want to just smudge it all out. 
but there's a bit too much backscatter. So what we do for that is we, uh, is we set the opacity to, let's say, 50%. And now I can paint, uh, anywhere I paint, it blends it 50-50 between the filter and the original image. So it still keeps some of the detail of the background, um, but it softens the harsh um, white of the backscatter so that it's not as distracting. Okay, and then there's a few dots that are that I don't like, so I'm gonna go up to 100% opacity, and I'm just gonna quickly click through them just to make it look nice and clean. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and now for the sun rays, um, what I like to do is kind of a mix of two things. So I'll go at 50% opacity uh, for some areas, like the surface of the water, and just kind of paint in, um, in, in stripes along with the sun rays, leaving some of the areas with a bit more scatter. Um, because I don't like painting over all the sun rays and just removing all the details. Do a little bit more clicking, clean things up. Okay. And there you go. So overall, that looks pretty nice for your image. Um, obviously, if you want to spend more time uh, to make it cleaner, then uh, it's better if you make the brush smaller and do more clicking uh, versus dragging a large brush over the whole image. Um, but obviously, it's, it's a trade-off between how clean you need your image to be um, versus how much time you want to spend on it and how, how, how much backscatter there is. Anyway, this looks pretty good. So the next thing is, uh, is to understand exactly what this Dust and Scratches filter does. So let's zoom in. And what you can see is anywhere that the filter has been used, here we use it 100%, and here we haven't used it, there's, a, there's an interface where you can see there's noise on the, on the original image and there's no noise where we use the filter. So what I like to do for this is add some noise to the filter layer. And so what we have to do is uh, click off of the layer mask here and click instead on the layer itself. Okay. Now we go filter, noise, add noise. Okay. So here I'm going to play around with the percentage. Obviously something like 10% is way too noisy. 1% uh, is not enough in this case. So um, I find usually somewhere around 2, 2.5 works pretty well. So uh, you can also try using uniform or Gaussian. So in this case, I would say 2% Gaussian creates a pretty decent uh, blend between the two. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's definitely better than the smooth versus rough interface. So I put, okay, that adds my noise. So now the last thing I can do just on the DNS uh, filter layer is to uh, blur some of the noise. So I go filter blur, Gaussian blur. Here, uh, the higher the number, the stronger the blurring, the lower the number, uh, the weaker the blurring and you don't want too much. So obviously if I go to one pixel radius, uh, it makes it much too blurry. Um, but sometimes 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 uh, can be nice to just smooth it out a bit. So I'll use 0 0.1 and now it's looking pretty good. So at this point, uh, I, I'm basically done my Photoshop editing and so I, uh, I save the image, okay? And you can see here, it just it names it after the raw file with an edit after it. Okay, so now I've saved it. I can go back into Lightroom. So you can see here, Lightroom automatically loads uh, the edit file once it's saved in Photoshop. And it stacks it with the original raw. So now when I go back into my library, I can see the edited file right next to the original. And you can see there's quite a bit of difference in the backscatter. The edited one looks a lot nicer and it only took me 
it took me less than five minutes of time um, to make the changes. So that's all I have. Um, as you can see, Photoshop is a really good tool for removing backscatter quickly while not killing your image quality. Now the only thing to keep in mind is that if you want to do something with your images like print them uh, or show them off at a very large size, um, then you are going to want to use a different method because the dust and scratches filter does remove some detail and um, despite the noise piece it still does look different. So we have a separate tutorial on the guide about using content aware fill to remove backscatter um, without compromising image quality. Of course that takes quite a bit more time and this method works really well for social media and other kind of online use. And the last step that I do now that we're back in Lightroom is I go back into the develop and I just add a bit of noise reduction and I find this kind of helps smooth out the difference between the original uh, noise in the photo and the noise we added in the dust and scratches filter layer. So that's that. Uh, I hope you found this useful and I hope it saves you some time uh, processing your underwater photos. Thanks for watching.